Hello all and welcome to a collections video and this is all my small collections. Yes, I have ripped off Blink-182 just a little bit there with the title. So all my small collections, they're all collections that are basically less than 15 games. They all have varying reasons. I mean, we'll get onto those as they turn up and I'm doing them in lowest quantity to highest quantity. So the first couple, spoiler ahead here, is only going to have just the one game. And then beyond that, we're going to finish off with a system that has got 13 games games and one that is certainly going to grow but as I say all varying reasons we'll get onto that in a minute and we're going to start off with the one that has been on screen the whole time here it is the Sega Saturn game yes this is the only Sega Saturn game I own it is just a one in the collection and the reason for this being is I went into a CEX one of the two CEX that are quite local to me neither of them have ever had a Sega Saturn game in until I saw this. And to be honest with you, since as well, I've never seen a Sega Saturn game in them e either as well. So when I saw this in there for £5 in fantastic condition, I asked to have a look inside because it was in the glass cabinets. So if I can get it open, and of course it, the manual is going to fall out in true Sega Saturn box fashion. I asked if the manual was in there. It was. The disc obviously was in there. I was able to check that. That is in nice condition too. And I just had to have it because I'm a big fan of the Virtua Fight franchise. I do actually really like it. And despite not owning a Sega Saturn, it was just too nice a copy and, and too good of a chance to pass by. And I can reveal that once, you know, we can all get out there and start hunting again, the next system that I'm going to start saving up CEX trade, it for, trade credit for is a Sega Saturn. It's just the only Sega system that I've never really played or never had a full-on experience with in the past. And as I'm a massive fan of Sega consoles, I would like to rectify that. And I do have a game that I can play off the bat as well. And then, of course, there's going to be a few more that I can add too. So, yes, Virtual Fighter 2 for the Sega Saturn is my only Sega Saturn game. There is another system I only have one game for. And that is not just Super Nintendo in general, but actually Super Famicom in this case. Basically, the story behind Behind this is as I say I've been largely a Sega person growing up so I never really had the Nintendo consoles but of course I do want to experience Nintendo games now I'm older and I'm very fortunate now to have a Retron 5 which plays SNES, Super Famicom, NES, Famicom and Game Boy Advance so when I bought it at the London gaming market recently for the console it was £95, which was a great price, and they even said you could have one game with it, and they were all Super Famicom games. And as soon as they said I could have one game, it had to be F-Zero when I saw it there. I love F-Zero. It is truly an absolutely great racer. If you haven't played F-Zero, you need to rectify that as soon as possible. Fantastic game. So from there, we're now on to games that I've got two of. There are three examples of, of that. And seeing as we've brought up the Famicom, and uh, not Famicom, the Retron 5 and what it can play, I'm going to show you my Game Boy Advance games. And it is literally just two of them. One of them I saw, and as I say, I love Sega, and I saw this in a cash converters of mine at 399 i think it was and again i just had to have it so you get smash pack i have booted this up it is a compilation it's got three games on it it's a bit of a random combination to be honest with you i'm sure there is more than one smash pack so the other games that would be more more popular i would imagine would be on it however there is a very popular game on here in golden x so it's nice to be able to play golden x on the go it's also got sonic spinball on it and echo the dolphin so those are the three games that are on the sega smash pack for the game boy advance and the only other game boy advance game i've got which i haven't got around to playing it but i will do and i've never played a digimon game and i was very kindly gifted this by my good friend the retro bear and this is a digimon battle spirit as i say i have no idea what this game is about and i haven't got around to trying it yet perhaps i will actually when i finish recording this video because it brought it to my attention when i started looking for what i own and not only did it give me the car we got the manual as well for it so it's the first game boy advance game that i've got with a manual and the second game boy game advance that i've got overall and we're going to stick with the nintendo stuff we're going to stick with the nintendo stuff and the retron 5 and having that and the stuff I was able to play because when I bought it at the London Gaming Market, I'd seen this ironically in a Retro Bear video and I liked the look of the gameplay. So I had to have one of two NES games that I own Isolated Warrior. Isometric Shooter looks a lot of fun. As I say, I haven't got around to playing it yet, 
But uh, I saw that gameplay and I thought, that looks a lot of fun. I have to have that. And I think I only paid a fiver for this as well. It's not an expensive game. It's in great condition. And yeah, need to get on with this one and have a crack at this one too. And the only other NES game I got, I got very recently in my CEX roulette, which people may have seen. And that is Double Dragon. What is that to say about Double Dragon that hasn't been said before? An absolute classic of a side scroll and beat em up. Only ever played it in the arcade, never played it on the NES. So now I've got that retro on five looking forward to giving this a boot up and giving this a play right next system is these are literally just display pieces but they are games of something that's very nostalgic to my childhood and they are commodore 64 games i believe slash 128 not very knowledgeable on this but these were also gifted to me by the retro bear when he put our list of commodore games that he was passing off and i saw ghostbusters listed i thought you know what i have to have that just for the art artwork and put it on display i have very limited previous experiences with the commodore 64 i had a mate when i was at junior school that used to have one and I used to you know go around there once or twice a month and plays commodore 64 so i do have some experience with it and i was always jealous that i couldn't have one my parents would let me have one and i always really wanted one so yes the commodore 64 i've got ghostbusters for and the other one is just absolutely beautiful because i still watch it to this day and i'm a big fan of it and that is wrestling and this is again just a fine example of my childhood wrestling and when it's branded wwf Free WWF pin badges sticker on there is a nice thing to have on the front of the box, but as the bear said to me, there aren't actually any badges in there. But we've got a tape and we've got a manual, and it is fantastic. And this is literally it's propped up on my gaming shelves, just on display because absolutely love it. Absolutely love wrestling. And we've got we've got Hulk Hogan there, Silent Slaughter, and the British Bulldog. So yes, I actually have two Commodore 64 games in my collection. And um, we're going to stick with Nintendo a little bit here because. I did acquire a Game Boy Color quite randomly a few years ago, and that had one game with it when I, I randomly acquired it. I saved someone from just throwing it away. As you can imagine, I was like, whoa, 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 and I saved a blue Game Boy Color. So I only have four games for it, and I will start with the one that come with it because you, you're probably guessing it'll be a Mario game, and you're right. It's Super Mario Bros. Deluxe, and I've got to admit to you, Again, I've always preferred Sonic, but the original Mario games are a lot of fun. It's platforming fun. You can't really go too wrong with a little bit of Super Mario. Uh, next up, I haven't got around to playing this yet, but it is E.T. And when I saw this at the London Game Market, it wasn't a lot. I've probably taken the price off yet. Didn't pay a lot for it. I think it was only like four quid or something. And I just thought, you know what? I've got to give that a go. The Atari version that everyone knows that caused the infamous video game market crash back in the 80s, you know was an awful game and i just thought you know what i've never played an et game so i'm for four quid it's just got to be worth a, a little bit of fun one night and certainly giving it a bash i thought i'd just pick up et i also have monsters inc this turned up in a random flash retro games challenge i did at a cash converters where i had to get at least two games for tenor and this was one of them it is monsters inc and it's a side scrolling platformer which is not too difficult as you can imagine it's aimed at kids but i love disney and this was a little bit of fun and as you'll see on there we've got the esrb rating so it's american but that's obviously not a problem you know the Game Boy Color is region free, so it plays on there like a charm. And then finally, game number four of four, still in its plastic shroud. This was bought on the game market, Hardcore Revolution, ECW. And can we get it open without too much fuss? Yes, we can. There we go. Quite a simple looking cart there with the ECW branding looking absolutely fantastic, as it should do with the barbed wire wrapped around the letters. And again, I was just interested to see how a hardcore game wrestling game would play on the game boy color so again i picked this up again not for a lot it was like four or five quid but we've got ecw hardcore revolution and then next we have six games for the original xbox now i don't have an original xbox but this is one of these systems that i may get in the future and i like to pick up things for it if they interest me or if they're on a genre that I like, or even if they're only on Xbox games, because one day the system may turn up, but it will be after the Saturn if I do go for it, but I don't know where in the line. But anyway, we've got six games for the original Xbox. First up, Dead or Alive Ultimate. Love me beat em up. So when I saw this in the charity shop, I think it was for $2.99, I was always going to grab it. Two games in there, Dead or Alive, one and two or whatever. And if you flip the manual over, if I can get it out, flip the manual over, I think it's this way, there we go. We've got the instructions 
on the other side for Dead or Alive too. So you got yes, two Dead or Alive games in one bundle. As I said, it was only two ninety nine. So when I saw that, I had to have it. Other game I picked up. This was picked up in an antique shop for a pound, and it was in some shelving that was all money donated to charity, which was help the heroes. So not football manager games don't really interest me too much beyond a certain point. But when the money's you know, for charity. And the thing that really interests me is in absolutely mint condition. Now, it's not got any cellophane wrapping on him, but it's got this seal here on it. So it's technically still sealed, potentially. So that interests me, condition and stuff like that. Do you know what? And I gave the money to charity. Probably won't play it, so this may get moved on or passed on eventually, but I just couldn't turn it down when I saw that seal on it and the condition it was for, and then obviously the money went to charity. I think I actually, I put two quid in because of what it was for. So yes, next up, we've got a beat em up Like I say, if I can see a beat em up for cheap, I'll pick it up. Mortal Kombat Deadly Lights, yes, it's in the classics box, but it's just one of those games that, again, if I ever delve into getting... A original Xbox, then I'll be very much interested in giving this a go. I think it was during the period when Mortal Kombat lost its way a little bit, but at the same time, it's still Mortal Kombat, it's still a fighting game. I still want to give it a try. Next up is one of two games that turned up in a charity shop deal of two for a pound, and that was a real steal in Midway Arcade Treasures. So many classic games on there. So many classic games on there, and it was in fantastic condition, complete in boxes, manual as well. So again, I just, I just felt like I had to have it. It's not only on Xbox, you know, it's on other systems on the PS2 as well, I believe. But look at all those games; you can see them on the front there: Rampage, Paperboy, Tubin. This, that's, that's just without looking at the back, and there is everything that's on it. So I'm not going to read through them all, but there we go. A couple of that are sticking out to me. I see Smash TV there, Marble Madness, Clax. Bit underrated that puzzle game i actually really liked it but there we go your sinister brilliant super sprint oh there we go i'm not going to name them all but they keep catching my eye but yeah fantastic compilation so just had to have it next up is an only on xbox unreal championship heard great things about this so i would really like to give this a bash and if the original xbox ever enters my life i, I certainly will and there we go completing box of manual again fantastic condition that wasn't the other game in the two for one pound deal. The last game is, and that is a game that needs no explanation. Everybody knows Outrun. And I picked up Outrun 2, I say as part of two for a pound. No manual in there. And it is the bundle copy or promotional disc, not for resale. Disc spelled with a K. And what does that say about Outrun 2? That, as I've said before, fantastic game. Purely brilliant. And I can play this because Outrun 2 for the original Xbox is back compatible with the Xbox 360. So if you've got this and you've got 360 but not an original Xbox, you can still play it, which is why this one doesn't get put away like the other ones have done because they're still waiting for a system potentially one day to turn up. But this is on the shelves and I can dip into this and play Outrun 2 on the 360, even though it's an original Xbox game. Okay, next up we have seven PSP games. A PSP is something that recently re-entered my life. I think it was middle of last middle to end of last year. I had a PSP back in the day, but I sold it with all its games and I've got it back again. There's still some games on the hit list, so this this probably will go over 15 one day, but at the moment it's below so around about the halfway mark with seven, isn't it? So yes, yeah, so I've been picking up the odd PSP games I've seen cheap in CX or just cheap in general out and about. One that I did buy from CX, can't remember how much it was, wasn't a lot. Afterburner, Black Falcon, complete in box with manual. Again, I haven't got around to trying this one out yet, but I loved Afterburner, especially that cabinet you could sit in back in the day in the arcade. Absolutely loved Afterburner. So when I saw this game, I thought, you know, it's an Afterburner game. I have to give it a try eventually. Next up, this was picked up in a charity shop as part of a three for a pound deal with a mix of console games. I remember that. And this is Burnout Legends, and I have played this recently. This is complete in box with its manuals. It's a little bit a little bit ropey, but it is still all in there. And I had a lot of fun with this. A lot of fun with this. Burnout games are generally fun, so I do actually kind of recommend this one if you have a PSP. A lot of fun, Burnout Legends. Next up, up is Championship Manor 2007. This was bought in a charity shop for 50p. And I don't mind the odd football management game, but I find past a certain point, I'm not really into them. And unfortunately, 2007 is past that point. I have given it a go. I'll give it a try. And I, I think it's not a bad game if you like football management games, but I just didn't really like it on the PSP. 
I found it a little bit fiddly to control on the PSP and get to places, so didn't really enjoy it. It is complete in box with manual, and this one will probably actually be moved on. Next up, haven't got around to playing it yet, but I love the Pirates of the Caribbean's film. We have Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest, and I had this just the game, which I gifted to someone, because then I got this, and this was part of that three for one pound chat shop deal actually. So I did get two PSP games from that bundle. But what was really cool about it is it had a um, two UMDs in one box. One's the film and one's the game. Don't know if there are any other examples of a game and a, a video being bundled in one box on the PSP. I don't know of it. I would love to hear from people in the comments, by the way, if something like that else does exist elsewhere basically so yes haven't got around to playing it but i do like pirates of the caribbean so a game and a film in one box just a nice quirky little piece to have in the collection next up was a cex purchase taito taito legends power up get your words out robert needs no explanation it's a compilation of classic taito games and what drew me to it is the fact i could see space invaders on the front i could see new zealand story in the front it was already going to get my money for those two games alone there's what's on it if we've got Plus four enhanced PSP exclusive titles there as well. I must admit, those four games I have no real experience with at all. But having Space Invaders and Space Invaders Part 2 and New Zealand Story, I didn't really need to continue beyond there, but I will certainly be giving all the games on this a try. Kicks as well, that's a great little puzzle game. That might pop up again in a minute, spoiler. But yeah, it wasn't a lot of money. I think it was I think it was £4, I can't remember, but an absolute bargain for all those classic games that you're getting on there. So when the PSP did re-enter my life, thanks to CX Trade Credit Spend Up, I went to the shelves and picked out a game and they only had it on the Platinum range, which was unfortunate, but I'm not really bothered with PSP because it's not something I'm seriously collecting for. I am buying stuff to play. And this is a fantastic Tekken game on the PSP. I was just blown away by how much depth it's got on it. So many modes, such a roster as well, such a huge roster. Brilliant little game. Highly recommend this if you've got a PSP, and yet certainly if you like your beat-em-ups as well. This is brilliant. And I think it was only three quid. Only three quid as well. Had a manual in there too. It's got oh, UMD, obviously, great condition. You know, no cracking on the plastic or anything like that. So fantastic game, Tekken Dark Restoration on the PSP. And last of the seven on the PSP is Wipeout Pure. As spotted in a Big Game Hour Planet Retro video. This, if you look on there, 00001. First game released on the PSP. I didn't know that until I'd seen that video out, so great bit of info there. But it's just a Wipeout game. I like a little bit of Wipeout. And it pretty much delivers what it does on the box. It's a wipeout game. Not too many modes in it, but it makes up for that in-game play. It's a lot of fun. If you look, if you want wipeout on the go, you can't really go wrong with this if you've got a PSP. Cracking little game. And completing box with manual as well. Just need to get me WD-40 on the go still and have a clean up. Now, this was from CX, again, for like only like two or three quid. It wasn't expensive at all. But it's obviously been in game in its life as well. Because, oh, yeah, that's on the that's on the inlay. That's why I haven't cleaned that off. I can clean that off, though. But anyway, Wipeout Pure, one of seven PSP games I have. Next up, 11 games on the PlayStation 3. Yes, only 11 games on the PlayStation 3. Reason for that being is... I am going for a full Xbox 360 set, and I don't generally buy two of the same game for different consoles. So when I got my PS3, it was largely because I bought the one that could play PS2 and PS1 games as well. So it's a great space saver and a great way of finally being able to play some PS1 and PS2 games as well. But I do want to buy some PS3 games, you know. Obviously, exclusives that aren't on the 360, I'm definitely interested in. So I have bought a few of those. There is one exception, and that's going to be first, and that is just this copy of Colin McRae Dirt. I went into a charity shop, an RSPCA charity shop. They had this on the shelf with all the football games, and it was only 50p. And even though it is a game that is on the 360, the condition of the steelbook is amazing. The steelbook itself, the design is amazing as well. It's absolutely brilliant. It's, it's awesome. So to have it in such great condition as well, to look inside it, manual, disc, everything in it, it's just so minty. It is unbelievable that for this to turn up. Yes, I could trade it in for about, I think it's four or five pound trading value, but I'm not going to. Just to a nice condition. And if for whatever reason I do decide, do you know what? I do need to pass this on because I've got it on a 360. It's not going to get played. It needs to be appreciated. I will find someone to pass it on to that will appreciate it. So I do believe all the rest of the games, all the other 10 are exclusives. And I haven't got around to playing any of them, but I will do. I will do, honestly. It's just a matter of finding the time. So we've got one of the very first ones I picked up. 
at the same time as something else. Remastered in high definition, God of War collection. God of War, God of War 2. Obviously, the God of War is a well-known franchise. I know these are going to be good games. Again, it's just about getting around to playing them. Pretty much going to whiz through these because, as I say, I haven't played them, so I can't really offer too much information on them. And next up in that case was this. Another 49p from game. This was infamous. Complete in boxes manual. Again, another game I'm just looking forward to trying at some point. And then we'll put these two on together because we have Killzone 2 and Killzone 3. And I've got Killzone on the PlayStation 2. So when I get round to it, I can blast through all three in a row on the same console because it plays PS2 games. I think I've got manuals in both of them. Yes, manual in there. No manual in that one, actually. Got that wrong. However, I was going to say... I'm not collecting seriously for the PlayStation 3. It's all about playing the exclusives. And to be honest with you, if there's no replayability in them, uh, they'll probably be passed on as well. So the, the collection size could dwindle as well. But if they're that good that I want to play again, they're definitely staying. And one that will probably stay because racing games have a lot of replayability. So I think I need to get around to Motorstorm pretty soon, actually. Complete in boxes manual. Again, this was picked up from CX, I think, for 50p. It's not a lot of money. People really rave about this one when it comes to racing on the PS3 side. Again, I do really need to get around to that. But the one I need to get around to the most is up next. I bought it for four quid. I think it might have crept up a little bit since. The Last of Us. Yes, I know. I know. I need to prioritise this over everything because of what I've heard about this. Everyone gets blown about away by this. So, yes, I really need to crack on and play The Last of Us. And then, of course, talking about franchises, you can't really dodge it on the PS3. We have Uncharted, Drake's Fortune. I'm going to pop... I think they're all. these are all with manuals. No, that one isn't. We've got Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. That does have a manual. And then finally, Uncharted 3, which also has a manual. So we've got all three Uncharted games. And I think two of them were 50p, one of them was a pound. They're not expensive either. Again, it's just another series that I just need to experience at some point and play through. And then finally, PS3-wise, a game that I have actually played. The first game I ever got a trophy off of on the PlayStation 3, Wipeout HD Fury. Again, it's Wipeout. ton of depth that is by what I've looked. I've only had time to play three or four races. I'm, I made sure I lock a trophy. So I've got my very first trophy on this. This is a bronze trophy, and I love Wipeout. So this, this is one that's got replayability, and it's a racer. It will stay. So we have... Yes, Wipeout HD Fury. Okay, next up, 12 games we're on to now, and these are all for the original Game Boy. As I say, that Game Boy Color came into my life, and that plays original Game Boy games, and I just had to pick out a few titles for it. I've played a few of these, not all of these. I will get round to them all eventually, and let's go, th go for it. And first up, Chase HQ. This is a Dodger. Chase HQ in the arcade was absolutely phenomenal. It is a great game. This is a very bad port, unfortunately. I know it has restrictions and such like that, but it is just bad. It's not good at all. There are fine examples of racing games or driving games on a Game Boy, and sadly, this is not one of them. Next up, Source at London Gaming Market. Totally intrigued by it. Had to have it. Game and Watch Gallery. The good thing about this is you can actually have it in an easy mode and a hard mode there's two difficult settings there is also a setting to turn it on to the old style graphics as if it was still on the game and watch or have more up-to-date graphics for what the game boy could do as well a lot of fun i think there's three on there sorry i cannot remember what they were all called but honestly a lot of fun if you like your game and watch next up I haven't got around to this but i'm hearing big things about this apparently it is one of the most addictive golf games around certainly on the game boy so i do need to get onto that as soon as next up a game that just interested me size so and platformer Lo looney tunes have to get around to that black cartridge as well not a gray cartridge so don't know why that is i'll be interested to learn so if you know why in the comment section do educate that flash challenge I spoke about where I bought two retro games, this was the other one. Fun little puzzle game. You, you can quite easily lose time in this once you get the hang of it. I've got to be honest with you. So, yes, good little puzzle game, that one. Another race. So, this is one I haven't got around to playing on the Game Boy. Nigel Mansell's World Championship Racing. Again, I, I, I'm always fascinated by races on handhelds and, and how they'll play. And they're, they're typical games that you can just dip in and out of. And that's why I love races. Next up, one I have played... Nintendo World Cup. This turned up for 50p in a CX. I don't believe it's 50p anymore. 
and it's a unique football game. I think there's only three per team, but you can move the other player off screen and then call the ball to them right in front of the goal. And, and you, I actually was able to complete this on my first go by working that out very soon on. You'll absolutely smash the first couple of teams once you learn that trick. And then beyond that, get, they, the other team do score goals, but you can outscore them. It's literally a case of how many goals you'll score before the World Cup's over once you get a little method down to a team. So after that, we've got... I haven't played on the game, but I have played it. Kicks, which is a, a unique puzzle game, a cracking little puzzle game where you have to cut sections and reveal the screen while avoiding things that float round. So if they, if they hit your line before you cut the section off, then it will mean you lose a life. It is a really good puzzle game. So I played it on other things, just haven't got around to playing it on the Game Boy. I hope that's what it is, and I haven't got it totally wrong. If you've got a Game Boy, you have to have it. Super Mario Land. Um, I say you have to have it. I haven't got Tetris. I am on the lookout for it. But every time I seem to find Tetris, they want too much for it. But Super Mario Land, the only game I've ever finished on the Game Boy. Oh, Nintendo World Cup. That was a lie. So yes, the first game I ever finished on the Game Boy. So yeah, had to have a Super Mario Land. You've got to if you own a Game Boy. You've got to have Tetris as well. Need to rectify that. Again, cartoon, side-scrolling, platformer next. Tight, tiny Toon, Fabs' big break. I just love a side-scrolling cartoon platformer. So when I saw this, again, it was, it was at the London game market. It wasn't a lot of money. So picked it up for a play. And so did I with Zool. I haven't played the game, this Game Boy version yet. I have played it on the Mega Drive. I think it's a lot of fun. And I'm certainly looking forward to see what the Game Boy can offer as well. And when I spoke about bad driving games on the Game Boy, I can now bring in a good one. And that is V-Rally. I was actually pleasantly surprised by how good this was on the Game Boy. I really enjoyed it, actually. It was good for a quick blast, and it'll be good for a quick blast again at a later date. So that is the 11 Game Boy games I have. And the last one, the last system that I'm going to show you, is 13 games. There was 12 Game Boy games, I believe. 13 Dreamcast games. And this is a collection that will grow way beyond 15. So this only just qualifies at the moment. So let's crack on and show you them. Because I had Dreamcast back in the day, and I will be adding to it. It's basically where I was going with that. So first up, Crazy Taxi. Still with a label on from a independent second-hand game shop that used to exist that sadly doesn't anymore that would have been long gone by now so crazy taxi needs no explanation i've always said that the dreamcast is the best console for arcade ports just in general and you will not get a better arcade port of crazy taxi for me than this one on the dreamcast it has the original soundtrack music by the offspring of bad religion on it too some later iterations had to remove that just because the licensing ran out this has it it has it all it has it perfectly it has everything love crazy taxi so when i got dreamcast again arcade stuff and arcade ports i had to have its version of daytona usa 2001 by the way that crazy taxi is complete in box with manual this one i believe is as well it's just a little bit hard opening these isn't it at times We've got the manual, yeah, manual and extra bits of paper are all there in the back. So, yes, Daytona USA 2001, just for me, Daytona fix on my Dreamcast. Everyone loves a bit of Daytona. Everyone knows Daytona. Next up is a very recent purchase, another arcade port, F355 Challenge. And I remember this in the arcade, and the cabinet was fantastic. You had a sort of seating cabinet with one screen, but there was also a seating cabinet that had three screens. And I think that is where all the experience was. When I finally got this back again, I was happy to have it, and I'm still happy to have it. I will keep it. It just wasn't what I expected. It's all about the arcade experience with this one, I think. And I would advise that if you've played the arcade game before, it could potentially be a little bit of a letdown to you. But it's, you know, it's still a really good port, and it's not a bad driving game. It's just not as good as I remembered, sadly. Being honest here, next up, when my Dreamcast died, I did actually sell a controller, a VMU, a one game, and that one game, rather foolishly, was Power Stone. This is phenomenal. It is brilliant. It is basically an in a room fighter. You pick up objects, throw them at your opponent, you collect the three gems, which obviously then triggers off your Power Stone and makes you a little bit stronger and harder for a while and then that is with a time and that runs out and the three stones flip around the room and then you go running off trying to find them while trying to beat up your opponent as well and obviously if you hit your opponent while they, you know you've got a couple and they've got one say then you'll knock the gem out of them and then you can pick it up and get the power stone again 
absolutely cracking beat em up lost hours to this back in the day so glad to add this back to the collection again back in the day bought this why not ready to rumble boxing i do have a manual with that power stone game by the way i keep forgetting to open these now just showing a lot of cartridges ready to rumble boxing not a big fan of boxing games however this i don't think someone's got a manual it feels very light oh it has got a manual it's just very light so not a big fan of boxing games, but this one is a little bit more out there. It's a little bit more, again, arcade -y. Love an arcade game. And it's, yeah, the characters aren't, you know, surrealistic. They're definitely not realistic. I mean, look at them all. Uh, the Afro Thunder, I think his name was. Fantastic game, ready to rumble boxing. Absolutely love it. So for a boxing game and for me to like it is quite unrare. This is then quite rare in, to me. Next up... Again, not a big fan of fishing games, but this one is brilliant. Sega Bass Fishing. Again, another fantastic arcade port. A lot of fun. can imagine it would be a lot of fun, a lot more fun at home if you had the actual peripheral that turns your controller or is a controller that's the fishing reel. However, I don't have that, but it's still a lot of fun. I say, as a fishing game, it's the only one that I've really ever found fun. And the arcade cabinet is to pull the string side to side and actually have the tension as well absolutely fantastic so yeah just wanted that experience at home as well to the best that it could provide and it's stellar so yeah complete with manual as well i'm guessing i've got the disc in the front there it is yep great game sega bass fishing next up underrated racer time sega gt haven't played this for a very long time so i'm struggling to remember it but i do remember it being a lot of fun and one of those games you could just accidentally lose yourself with for a few hours and there's the manual in the back open that gingerly because i know the box on this one is broken but it is box complete and again just a fantastic racing game you can pick this one up i think relatively on the cheap so it's not too dear nowadays next up another fantastic arcade port like i said they do keep coming this is why I love the Dreamcast and why I played it for years and years and years until it literally died on me. And there we go. The disc is in the front. Do we have a manual for this one? Cannot quite remember. Yes, we do. It even says on the front, look there, just in case you forget. Manual. But there we go. F Again, Sega Rally. Do I need to tell everybody about Sega Rally? I'm not the greatest at rally games. I never I never was, to be honest. I obviously bought this pre-owned in game, I believe. But I'm not the biggest fan of rally games overall the big hits generally get through but this is just fantastic this is amazing and i highly implore anybody for some reason who has a play sega rally to definitely get onto it oh dear talk about fantastic arcade ports they just keep coming they just keep coming soul caliber i think this is the best soul, soul caliber game that was ever made for a home console i bought i bought some again another individual game shop whilst out on holiday to somewhere like great yarmouth i saw it there and i was like oh, i got to i need that i want that and uh had enough money for it fortunately so yes i bought it there i like that like m15 plus medium level animated violence it was look used tested 100 percent guaranteed yes it was put hours into a case at the front it's broken which is probably why everything's in the back i'm gonna guess yes we have there we go manual and disc are all in there seriously just the best arcade soul caliber game ever released just my personal opinion if you do disagree with me i'm i'm more than open to uh to hear your comments but great game absolutely fantastic game love soul caliber still do to this day uh next up just a football game that was picked up that this one will leave the collection i'm only collecting stuff that i want to play for the dreamcast i remember picking this up from cash converters i think for 99p it's not brilliant it's not even close to being good to be honest with you as even as a football game we've got manual disc in there so this will be passed off but at the moment it is still in the collection another another franchise i absolutely love again we've already brought it up once Virtua Fighter 3 TB, the TB standing for Team Battle. Again, this was not bought for that price. This was bought as pre-owned in-game once upon a time. Uh, we've got the manual there with a little bit of wrapping around it. That's, that's something I've forgotten about. And then this is there in the front. Yeah, Virtua Fighter, fantastic fighting game. Not the best fighting game around, but still an absolutely brilliant game as well. Next up, oh, I've, I've sunk cows into this. It is my favourite football game of all time. And I know it's not the best. And I know it's got its flaws. But I absolutely love it. It's just so addictive. Again, it's I love my football games arcadey. This just goes back to my past. But I love my football games arcadey. And Virtua Striker was alright. It had the more blocky animations. Didn't really run as well. But when they made Virtua Striker 2 and all its yearly iterations. This is 2000.1. I remember losing hours 
in the arcade to Virtual Striker 98. But this is, I love this. I just play the arcade mode over and over again. And in fact, the manual is in there. And I'm going to have to pop the disc out the system, which is luckily it's right next to me. But there's the disc. And I mean, I bought this pre-owned in-game. And for some reason, there's an EB written on it in pen there. And it, I did notice that it was on the manual as well there. Yeah, they're top right. So it pro that's probably someone's initials that owned it before they traded it into game. But I keep saying I'm going to upgrade this, but because this is the copy that I had and have sunk so many hours into it and so pleased to have, I'm just going to keep it as it is, just purely for past nostalgic reasons. So yes, Virtual Striker 2 version 2001. Absolutely love it. And then the final game. The final game is another series of sport games that I don't generally like playing, and that is tennis games. But this is virtual tennis, Sega Professional Tennis there, as it says on the case. And virtual tennis is just phenomenal. Again, it's less serious and more arcadey. It's more arcadey, and I say less serious, but it's still serious as well at the same time. You know, it's not stupidly arcadey, basically. But yeah, manual in there as well. Disc in there as well. You know, if you don't like tennis, I'd still give this a go. You'll, you'll, you'll sink hours into this. It is so, so much fun absolutely love virtual tennis i really do and that ladies and gentlemen is game 13 of 13 from the dreamcast and all my small collections wrapped up in one video i'm hoping to do an update on my xbox 360 collection soon because we're hitting the year from when i made an xbox 360 collection video so that'll be interesting to go through there's quite a lot in that one but ladies and gentlemen yes that has been my small collections video the dreamcast obviously will be above 15 soon and possibly some of the Nintendo stuff will be as well. Now I have ways of playing it and I need to get basically all your mainstays and your classics and all the popular stuff there as well. So ladies and gentlemen, this has been a lot of fun actually to go through all of the small collections as well. And if you have a lot of small collections, why not make a video too? I would love to see everybody's small collections as well. So ladies and gentlemen, just leave me to say now, thank you very much for watching. And as always, take care.